action. Detroit Mercy looking for their third straight trip to the NCAAs. And the Titans Rashad Phillips had a message for Butler. You want the title? Come and get it. Quote, last year we won it. We still feel this is ours. They have to take it away from us, end quote. Rashad Tawney is not good sportsmanship, but he is the MCC Player of the Year, averaging 23 points coming in. Phillips, however, would not average 23 points in this one. Fancy dribbling, but that's an air sphere. Four of 19 shooting. First half, Butler by eight. Mike Marshall spinning. Butler up 10. Second half, more for the Bulldogs. Thomas Jackson, gimme that. Comes up with a steal, goes the other way, and Jackson to Lavelle Jordan. Throws it in reverse. He had 15 assists. Jackson did. Butler by 17. It's a 13-0 run. Later, Jordan with the steal ahead to Marshall. This is why he was your journey MVP. He had nine. And Barry Collier, the cartwheel. That's a 9.7 from us, but the Soviet judge only gave it a 2.6. 62-43 the final. So the Bulldogs win their third trip to the NCAAs in four years by virtue of their school record 15th straight win. League MVP Rashad Phillips struggled, but so did the team. The Titans shot just 26%, and they had their lowest point total of the season. Sun Belt title game, Louisiana, South Alabama. Billy Jones to Lonnie Thomas for the jam. Louisiana goes up two. Now South Alabama down one. Erickson Beck finds Ravante Dunstler. Got the J. Jaguars up one. Jaguars up two under seven minutes to go. Dusty Dubs is going to hit the jumper. Under two to go. It's a four-point game. South Alabama up one at the free throw line. Beck misses the free throw. Louisiana goes the other way. They're down one inside of ten. How much time, please? Lonnie Thomas on the inside, inside of five seconds, up and good. And Louisiana comes back to go up by one. Last chance. Dantzler off the mark. And Louisiana wins it 51-50. to 50, So they are going to the NCAA tournament for the finals. First half, Southern Utah by three. Frederick House with the strip. Leads to the break and feeds Jim Faulkner. Southern Utah led by two at the half. Second half, Valpo got hot. Lubos Barton gets the pass on the wing, and he knocks down a three. Valpo goes up, and then Dwayne totally to Ivan Vujic. If it feels good, Vujic. Valpo goes up by nine. Nine. And they go on to win their sixth straight conference title, the final 71. After losing in conference six times this season, they miss out on the luxury of a first round bye. Instead, they're the fourth seed and will need to win four games in four days, beginning with Boston College. Huskies have beaten the Eagles 22 straight times. First half, tied at 14, UConn inbounds. Nobody pays attention to Khaled El Amin. Passes it in, and then he's wide open. Huskies by two. Later in the first, UConn up 22-20. Edmund Saunders, the big block. El Amin out to Albert Mooring on the run. Mooring lays it in for two of his 12. UConn led 31-25 at the half. Second half, all UConn up by 11. Mooring shot is long. Kevin Freeman there for the rebound, the put back, the foul. He had 11 points to go along with 11 boards as the Huskies move on. UConn's dominance over BC reaches 23 games. For the Huskies, it's their seventh straight Big East tourney win, tying the record set by Georgetown from 84 to 86. Double doubles for Jake Voskal and Kevin Freeman. The eighth seed, West Virginia against number nine, Georgetown. This is a close one. We'll pick it up late. 155 left. Georgetown clinging to a one point lead. Kevin Braswell loses Tim Lyles with a sweet move. Georgetown up by three. West Virginia's ensuing possession. Lionel Armstead answers the pump fake, nails the three game tied at 67. There were 18 ties, 19 lead changes. West Virginia ball, 13 seconds left. Brooks Berry throws up a prayer. Georgetown takes over with 6.2 seconds left. Georgetown's ensuing possession. Braswell taking it up the right side, driving. Said he always wants the last shot. No doubt about that one. And Georgetown wins 70 to 67. Braswell had his best game in two years. 19 points, six assists, three three-pointers, only two turnovers. The Hoyas have won 12 straight opening round games. They have a date with top seed Syracuse tomorrow on ESPN2. The Mountaineers at 14 and 14 will hope for an NIT berth. To Memphis in the opening round of the Conference USA Tournament, number 12, Houston, number 5, Marquette. This is G. Gervin with the steal. George's little boy. Cougars up by three. Golden Eagles hoping to avoid the upset. Five foot, eight inch Cordell Henry blocks Gervin. Dribbles behind the back and pulls up for the three. That would put Marquette up 
or within one at 5150. But the Cougars would not fall. Kenny Younger big for Houston. Younger with 21 points. And Houston coming into the postseason had an 11 game losing streak. But Clyde the Glide Drexler's club with the big upset over Marquette today. 77 75 first ever conference USA tournament win for the Cougars who are 0 and 3 and they will play Tulane in tomorrow's quarters. Ninth seed St. Louis, eighth seed Southern Mississippi in the opener of the Conference USA Tournament. Southern Mississippi's David Wall, the pass intercepted, and Dave Ferguson would go the distance. The Billikens forced 23 Golden Eagle turnovers. Second half, Southern Mississippi keeping it close. And Wall with 25 points on the day, 8 of 16 shooting from the field in the second half. The Golden Eagles by one, just in love. Isn't everybody? And Chris Heinrich there for the tap in. And in the second half, St. Louis up by two, and the Billikens, just in love, puts the spin move on Earl Flowers. And St. Louis wins it 59-51. Just dominating from the start, led by Monty Mack. Off the turnover, Shannon Crooks feeds Mack. The break in the layup, UMass led 40-24 at the half. Second half, Minutemen on the run again. Mack misses the reverse, gets his own rebound, and puts it back. Mack with a game high 27. UMass continues their domination. Mack gets the ball in the lane, and pops the left hander, and he's fouled. UMass rolls 77 52. Mack with the 27. Shannon Crooks added 18 as the backcourt duo dominated. The Minutemen play George Washington in the second round tomorrow. Kane finishes their season by losing 13 of their last 14. UMass held their leading scorer, Wayne Smith, to just five points. Fordham. Taking on Virginia Tech, Bob Hill and the Rams looking for their first win in nine tries against Virginia Tech. First half, solid passing here. David Whaley takes the feed from Russ Wheeler, dunks it. Virginia Tech still trailed by two at the break. Second half, game tied at 46. Tech on the break. Roland Roberts feeds John Smith. Alley-oop dunk. Six seconds left. Fordham down three and looking for the tie. Terman Johnson's three-pointer at the buzzer is... All air ball. Virginia Tech wins 51-48. The teams combined for 35 turnovers. Virginia Tech playing without their leading scorer and rebounder. Dennis Mims held Fordham to just two points over the last 10 minutes. The Hokies play number six Temple tomorrow in the second round. Virginia Tech has never lost to Fordham in nine games. Back to the Big East at the Garden. Fifth seed Seton Hall, 12th seed Providence, 5 foot 10 inch Shaheen Holloway meet Kareem Shabiz. Ah! 42-25, Seton Hall. Uh, time winding down the first half, and Ty Shine hits Greg Morton. Tommy Amaker's team up 44-27 at intermission. Second half, all Pirates. Holloway with the alley-oop, and Reggie Garrett is there to finish it up. Holloway and the Pirates cruise to a 20-point win. Providence finishes the season. No team who played a first-round game has ever advanced to the Big East Championship game. First step toward what they hope will be a first, Villanova against Pitt, the Fighting Irish against Rutgers, our double sports center showcase. First, Notre Dame, that means Troy Murphy, who was named Big East Player of the Year on Wednesday. Irish were hot from the outside. Jimmy Dillon. You know, the Irish had just four trays against Rutgers in a loss back in November, and then Matt Carroll hits the three. Different strategy for Matt Doherty's gang. Irish up eight, David Graves would knock down the triple. Notre Dame would be up 15 at the half. But the question is, what we ask is, where was Troy Murphy anyway? You take a look at the tough defense, the physical defense being played by Rutgers. Everywhere Troy Murphy went, he was banging into a body, so he decides to step outside, and that's his value, his ability to create inside-outside balance. Murphy, 10 points, 9 boards at the half, and thank you for answering my question. More of Murphy. Turnaround in the post. 25 points, 14 boards in the game for Troy. Irish still bombing away in the second half. Murphy getting double teamed. That's okay. Dylan is there and open. Irish win. They are still alive as they win their first Big East tournament game following four straight first round losses. Their reward? Miami. Notre Dame shot almost 53% in this game. The Irish, no question, setting the tone when seven of their 10 threes came in that first half. All I know is we're still in the Big East tournament, and that's the farthest Notre Dame has been since they've been in the Big East. I'm proud of our guys. 
uh, Troy should be out here talking to you instead of me, but he wanted to be with the guys, and that's the kind of team we have. We got embarrassed at Rutgers uh, about a month and a half ago, and I thought we had a lot to prove to uh, the league, uh, to ourselves, and we came out and proved it against the fine basketball team. What about Villanova? Off a costly loss to BC, looked to pummel Pitt. The freshman Brandon Knight gets the younger bro of breath and Knight from the Cavs. Hits a three ball, hit within a point. Later in the first half, Jermaine Medley. He is not intimidated. From three-point range, four threes for Medley. Villanova by one at the break. Second half, up by only two, Steve Lapis decides to give it to his go-to guy. So keep an eye on Malik Allen. He's in the low post. Allen fighting hard for position. Eventually, will get the defender on his back, and then, just like that, hits the turnaround J. Minutes later, Watch Allen on the same block, really fighting out for position. Still calls for the ball, gets it deep in the post, and hits the turnaround J. This time, Allen takes a different approach, fights through two defenders, gets to the opposite block, pins the defender, and he hits another turnaround J. 24 points, 11 boards for Malik Allen. Freeze it! No, but now up by seven. The freshman, Garrett Buchanan. What kind of timing, Kenny? It's analysis. Okay. Analysis. Buchanan. Pushing it, finishing, and Nova, obviously a much-needed win over Pitt. Villanova, one of the keys, out-rebounds Pittsburgh, 38-28. to 28. And Xavier, Xavier up to 12. Darnell Williams, look at that, off the backside of Rhode Island's Justin Henry. He gets the ball back and scores. We look at it again to see how Icelandic women feel about it. They think he's heads up. Xavier up 30-15. to 15. Up to Boris Bell, getting loose ball off the Xavier miss. Goes to the end, plus the foul. Rhode Island down by 11 at the break. Xavier out strong in the second. It's David West, the alley-oop feed to Lloyd Price. West was big, too. Xavier wins it 75-60. to 60. So 24 from David West. Such a career high. He was 10 of 16 from the floor. Also brought home 11 boards. Xavier now moves on to play St. Bonaventure next on Thursday on ESPN2. NCAA space on the line for both teams. The MAC championship, Miami of Ohio and Ball State. Miami's Anthony Taylor driving, leaping, hanging, hits that. Miami's up 34-33 at the half. Now five minutes remaining, Miami's down two. Jason Stewart, Ricola, hit the three. He had 25, Miami up by one. Ball State answers, Lonnie Jones down low. The jumper, that'll drop. Ball State taking the lead back, one point game. Now Theron Smith. Going baseline, you used me. Smith with 12 points in the game. And Ball State going on. Everyone throw your hands in the air and wave them around as though there are no repercussions. Ball State is in the NCAA tournament for the Sal at St. Joe's. Damian Reed down low, backs in, getting his hard drive on. No floppy disks there, and I better not misspeak on that either. Reed, nine points, 12 boards. So Sal hung tough. Pursue Butler, three. Money, he had 12. Late second half, Bill Phillips. Strong take. Bling, bling. And Billy Pito was dancing. No more rhythm than we thought. Phillips led all scores with 20. St. Joe's win, 65-56. LaSalle's now played in six Atlantic 10 Conference tournament games, and they're one in five. Conference USA Tournament, UNC Charlotte, which has made it to the conference summer game the last three years, hosting UAB and UAB's leading UNC scorer, Charlotte Eric Holmes. Holmes ball. breaks some serious ankles. Shorty had 34, UAB up six. Later, UNC Charlotte down three. Diego Guevara. Guevara! My man was 9 of 11 from three land, 28 points. He blows kisses to his wife at home games after he hits threes. Next time down floor, James Zimmerman money on the three. Guevara said before, we live and die by the threes. They are living and living large. Joby Thomas, fellas, leave your girl and her friends because it's 11.30 and the club is jumping. That was six straight three-pointers for UNC Charlotte. They win it 76-73. 49ers take their first step in their attempt to reach the tournament finals for the fourth straight year. Diego's 28 points, a career high. UNC Charlotte will face Louisville in Thursday's quarterfinals. Memphis at South Florida, staying in the Conference USA. Memphis struggling to get back in it. B.B. Walton comes up with the loose ball, okay. finishes with the rim rocker. He had 22. South Florida, seven-point lead. Just over three minutes to play. Memphis comes up with a steal. Kelly Wise throws it down to Courtney Trask. Freshman point guard doing some work. Put the Tigers within one. 13 seconds left. Marcus Moody, straight silk. Memphis, one-point lead, 59-58. 1.5 ticks left. South Florida down two. Altrin Jackson's three-pointer at the buzzer does not go. Memphis wins it 60-58. to They advance to play DePaul next. Memphis wins its first conference USA tournament.